Welcome back to our 650 build. I'm back again with Victor and we are ready to plant. Actually, we've done some small adjustments since the last video. We've glued the wood pieces so they won't float up and we've added some Amazonia into the backside so we can put some plants in there as well. The main purpose for those is to grow out of the tank. And also to stabilize the water. Yes, also the soil is there to stabilize the water. Huge thanks to Denerla Plants who sponsored this video. So we have to, actually, we have more plants than these, but they won't fit on the table. So yeah, thanks to Denerla Plants and our friend Yuris for providing with all the plants. It will probably take a couple hours to plant yes. a tank size like this. We need to prepare all these plants. Yeah, we yeah. have some help. Gagger is going to clean the plants for us, so we don't have to bother with that. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's start. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, plants for today. Typically, this size of tank, we're using a few hundred pots usually, but now we have a lot of sand area, a lot of open space. So we will use some uh, larger plants like uh, the microsorums on the trees. We'll use some moss here and there, but we try to preserve the texture and the shape of the wood. So we will not fully cover this with the moss. We'll use some plant on the back corners. Those plants probably will grow out. We will uh, try to keep the space open for the fish to swim and have this deep perspective for the tank. At least that's the goal, so we are just talked about that, which plant to start with. Probably we'll start with the foreground plants, so start on the lower side and just go back to the upper levels uh, later on. We have some crypts, well, the underside of the roots. Then on the wood, we have the microsorums, some different types, regular pteropus, we have some trident and we have some putty. Also, we have lots of small anubiases. This is the Nana Bonsai version. We have some weeping moss and Christmas moss. Those are gonna go on the wood as yeah, well. Yeah, the original idea was that to use Christmas moss. Yeah, the only because we had a, a very yes. kind of iconic scape with a weeping moss. And this time we wanted to use a different one, but uh, it's hard to get some species these days because of the COVID. So we need to find something else. And for this reason, we're using the weeping. And then we have some plants for the background, which are some Ludwigia species, um, the, what was the Rubina glandulosa, uh, glandulosa and the super red palustris. Also some Staurogen repens, which we usually use the in vitro type, which grows smaller and comes smaller. This is the potted one, the immersed one, and it's gonna stay quite big and grow quite big. If you trim it regularly, it's gonna start to get bushy and, and smaller in height. But if you let it grow, it can grow quite high actually, which not a lot of people do. And it also grows some flowers eventually. And also what we have here is a Limnophila aromatica, which is quite similar to Limnophila hip hippuridoides, I never know the name. Yeah. Um, which also has a really nice flower. We've had it for a lot of times in the old showroom. We've yeah. used it in quite a lot of aquariums growing out and blooming and we've never had it in here, so this is the time for that as well. Yeah, so the main installation will have some, some plants on the upper part, not too big, probably a 10, 15 centimeter, and we'll still get enough light from the solars. Growing these plants immersed is actually quite tricky. It, it takes a lot of practice and actually just trial and error because you grow them out. They need a lot of light to be nice and to be compact outside of water. But if they get too close, they usually dry out or even burn. So you have to find that sweet spot for trimming where it actually feels itself better and it has the nicest form it can get. 
Ah, so they probably uptake more nutrients if they are out of the water yes. because of the large leaf size and the larger roots. So uh, make sure you have enough nutrients in the soil part or you can use root sticks or whatever. If you just trace for the plants, then make sure it has enough uh, nutrients and fertilizers in it. We have quite high soil level in the back. So for example, if we're gonna put this in, probably two thirds of the plant will be already outside of the water and that's fine. But if you plant them under, under water and you let them grow out, uh, actually when they reach the water surface, they're gonna try to stay under water. So they start to grow by the water surface and then grow out, which means you have this crack in the stem of the plant. And you can avoid that by, when, you, when it reaches the surface, you can use some wooden sticks or something that you can lean the plant on and it actually leads it out of the water so it grows out straight and you don't have the crack in the stem. Yeah, I think the original idea came from uh, Sumida Aquarium and then yes. some ADA tank, uh, what we've seen in Japan. So we tried to use kind of a similar things using easy plants for the upper part and uh, not so demanding ones for the rest as well. We have a lot of Monte Carlo here. Aloparis pusilla, which yep. is a dwarf hair grass. We go to the bottom part and we have some crypts here. Yeah, this is actually the Cryptocorine Lutea Hobbit, which was available in vitro a few years ago, then discontinued, and now it's back in potted form. So that's quite a small growing uh, crypt, a bit bigger than, for example, the Parva. So yeah, it's quite unique and we always loved it. Then we have some Unsys Rapens and the Helianthum Tenellum Red. Most of the carpeting areas don't really get enough light. For example, the Pusilla will be fine if we plant it densely but the Monte Carlo would just not grow as well. So we're gonna put it in the upper parts and it's gonna be hanging down from the roots. Let's do it. Which one you want? <laughs> I will start with the crypts. Okay. <laughs> In this cape we will have a lot of shadows and some plants wouldn't do well on the lower part because there will not be enough light. For this reason we are using low demanding plants like crypts which grows well even in a shady area. This is another low demanding species, the Helanthium tenellum, and this is the red version. The leaves will have a kind of a reddish hue once it's developed fully. This grows almost everywhere and we like to use this type of plants for large aquarium like this one because the grass itself will grow like 8 cm in height and will fully develop a nice green carpet. With the dwarf hair grass, you usually see us that we uh, take it apart to very small pieces. Actually, we take apart one pot into 20, 30 small batches. But in this case, I'm going to pull it apart to three or four pieces only because it's going to grow quite slowly in the shaded areas. So this way it's going to get dense much quicker. Obviously, we need more plants to do this. With these big batches of Monte Carlo, I'm not even taking them apart and I'm trying not to use any kind of glue or anything like that. I'm just tucking it in into spaces in between the wood and rock. So if it stays for the first few hours, then it's going to root onto the surface and uh, you don't have to plant it or glue it.
With the microsorums, it's the same thing as the Monte Carlo. We just tuck it in into these spots. They're gonna hold perfectly after a few weeks. We mainly use smaller sized microsorums, so the Trident and the Putty version, because it helps to keep the ratios of the aquascape. If you use two big leafed plants, then it just destroyed the hardscape itself. We've used uh, almost half of the plants, so we are at half time approximately. As you can see now, it looks much better with some of the plants. And what will give a different uh, view to the layout is the moss, which will give some darker green tone to the layout. If you prepare for the planting, you probably would tie the moss to the wood pieces and just put in the moss covered wood to its position but it was much more of an ad hoc installation so we just dropped in all the wood pieces we don't want to dismantle it and now uh, tying with the moss cotton is a tough job so we probably will use just the glue As a third shade of green, we introduced the Anubias, and this is the Nana Bonsai version, one of the smallest species. It just adds some extra detail as well. Actually, this is the part where we have to be careful not to hide too much of the detail in the wood itself. It would make sense to tuck in these very small Anubiases into every bit of these very small cracks, but then we are left with no details in the hardscape itself. So yeah, we need to make sure that we leave some open. So I'm gonna try to get into the front corner with this one. This is basically a useless tool unless you want to take out your phone from the toilet, as Victor said. Um, yeah, it's not very precise, but it's long enough maybe to reach down there. Nope, this won't work either. Make sure you're always using some water for the plants not uh, to making sure it's not dry out if it's dry out then the start will be much heavier and you will face with more algae issues so that's the reason why you need to make sure plants are always kind of wet and you're spraying them while victor is doing the mosses i started with the background there's already the limnophila aromatica is in the back and the starogyne and now I'm going with the Hygrophila pinatifida. We usually use the in vitro version. This is the same as the Staurogyne. It looks much different. It's much bigger in the potted form. So I'm going to use these behind those roots in the very back. And it's, they're just going to stick out behind the roots. Okay, we've uh, almost done with the planting. We have the upper parts planted by Tommy. So almost all the plants which will grow out from the water is there. We are planting this for three hours with uh, small breaks here and there. In the first few weeks, we'll see how each of the plants will grow, what we need to change, tweak on the layout if it's needed. Probably the first two, three weeks will be a little bit harder because we're using a lot of wood here. This wood will release a lot of organic materials and uh, probably will tint the water. The filters need to cycle in the first uh, few weeks. 
So at that time, the startup will be a little bit rough, but then everything will be fine. We are throwing in a lot of purigen to make sure we, we don't have to brown water here. We are making sure uh, we have more water changes in the first few weeks. Since I failed with this corner, we need a new plan. And by new plan, I mean smaller hands, please. So this is it for today. Uh, actually, we're gonna just cover it with foil for now and we're gonna fill it up later on. And this is a special one because you won't see it filled up at the end of the video because with this much ironwood, the water is gonna be fully brown even though we're gonna put in a lot of purigen into the filter. You're gonna see it this way finished and in a few weeks time you're probably gonna get a cinematic about this tank and that's where you're gonna see what fish we went with and and the final fully filled up look probably and hopefully with some plants already sticking out on top and we have uh, a few more tanks left in the gallery which is ready for rescaping so let us know in the comment below what type of layout would you like to see from us more like on this natural side more extreme advanced level or just build an easy one Some let us know maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe so yep i think we did a great job hope you guys enjoyed it yes thanks again for the nether plants for supporting us with this video see you guys next week goodbye bye